me feeling like I'm academics. Can't ride no way. You know, um, you know, in in it, you know what's so funny about like radio? Radio is like such like a antiquated format. Even the way they promote shit, it just seems old and slow and rigid. And and that's the exact reason why, if you ask me, I think that platform or that type of um, form of media is just you know it, it'll never really come back to its prominence. Right. Um, so the only show that pretty much still is kind of relevant in the hip hop culture that's on radio is The Breakfast Club, you know, historic show. Uh, it's really co-hosted by Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy. Used to be hosted, uh, co-hosted by uh, Angela E, but she went on to do different things. Now they've been doing rotating seats, all type of people. They've been trying to bring up there doing whatever. And uh, the person who've kind of been up there the most is Jess Larius. Now, recently, Jess Larius dissed. Both of these guys, this Charlemagne and DJ Envy, uh, after they had a take about SZA, and she was basically like, these things is trash, they're old, they don't know what's going on. And a lot of people assumed, and I think that was a very fair assumption, that, you know, okay, but she must have not got the job, because she had announced that she had got the job, then we heard nothing, and then she's dissing them, and then now, randomly, we see a video now pops up, but... Let's watch. I would think somebody like the Breakfast Club wouldn't need the clout chase. But knowing them, they probably want somebody light skinned. Well, I'm just with the message. My news is real. Just hilarious. Now comments on them saying these niggas is trash. Y'all could have got somebody better than that. I'm not hating. They don't give a damn about what she's done. She made the announcement before it was even inked. That third seat on the Breakfast Club was one of the most sought after coveted positions in hip hop media. Less hilarious. You were using that Breakfast Club to besmirch my name speaking so negatively. She ain't over there. She's back on the Monopoly board. Jess, man, you gotta get more going on in your career. I saw Jess deep. Hilarious say she, you know, got the role and stuff. Why did she say that? They say you don't work there no more. Girl, did you get fired or not? How the hell are you gonna get fired on your day off? What happened to Jess Hilarious on The Breakfast Club? They either didn't hire her or fired her. The Breakfast Club just isn't what it used to be. They can either choose to put a new three in there or kill the show off completely. I think The Breakfast Club is over, man. Man. You cannot make an announcement. They have rollouts. Party. They need to make this a extravaganza. Women empowerment. And she did some Baltimore shit. <laughs> they be going rogue. She spoke too soon. She announced her move before her move was done. And now she's left with an egg on her face. Lock it in, y'all. Jess Hilarious will not be the co-host of The Breakfast Club. This is all just like one big hoax. These niggas trash. This shit came off as if the two of them had something to do as to why she isn't a part of The Breakfast Club. I'm sorry you didn't get the job, um, less yes. hilarious. <laughs> Do you feel she called them out over not securing her spot as an official call? Mm, this is giving me stunt, if you ask me. Okay, so th this was her announcement. I guess she is going to be the third co-host, and I guess the diss to them was like an orchestrated plan. Also, Charlemagne and them acting like they're half retarded when people ask them about what's going on with her. They wanted to make a little splash. I, I guess this is good. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, just just in reality, like, again, the, the Breakfast Club, um, these days, it's going to always be a staple of the culture. Like, you just got to give, it's the last most relevant, iconic radio show, and you always got to give that show all the credit in the world. The only thing I would definitely say is that, you know, I, I think the demographics of where they're going to they're gonna thrive versus where, like, most other creators are, which is most other creators are just internet creators, and not saying that The Breakfast Club ain't on the internet, but they're thriving not necessarily because of the internet, because name the last, like, Breakfast Club interview that's really internet, like, ever really done stuff. I think... I think they're thriving mostly off the fact that people drive to work. They're a very popular station. They have the guy who is probably one of the best um, in, in the world at, you know, orating or being like, you know, um, doing color commentary, um, Charlemagne. And they're going to be fine in that market, right? Um, them adding her, I think I, the only way I could see the impact of her is if, you know, she gets them to go more viral on an internet level. Because, again, it's a radio show, right? You know, Charlemagne done tone it down. 
if Jess gets them like posted every day on the blogs like they used to be, I could see that that was that would be a great move. Otherwise, you know what I mean? They're going to be self-sustaining among a demographic that don't even tune into internet shit. Like, they still get their news from radio. Like, you know what I mean? There's a bunch of people who they only tune into radio, and they tune into radio every morning when they're driving to work. So, you know, uh, that's why the, the Breakfast Club, no matter what you think about them, they're not going anywhere. But them adding her, I was, I'll was i be interested to see her impact. Now, do I think she's funny? No. Do I think she's, like, really talented? No. But it's not... She's not up there for someone like me. She's not even up there for someone like you. The Breakfast Club ain't even catering to people like y'all at this point. You know what I mean? The Breakfast Club is catering to like a fifty plus audience. Charlemagne's fifty. The other niggas fifty. Like they're they're they're. they're, they're uh, let me not say other niggas. I, I fuck with Envy. But um um yeah, they're they're aging gracefully too. So I'm not I'm not even knocking them. They're getting more into politics and other social issues, and it is what it is. Um cool. So yeah, she got a job. I, again, I, I don't know. You know, someone had this really interesting discussion about the Breakfast Club. They were like, yo, is the Breakfast Club, is it like washed or whatever the case is? I don't think so, right? Like, I don't think the Breakfast Club is washed. It's just that but people just have a million other options. Like, for example, right? And, and by the way, it's it's just media in general. By the way, I've just seen, you know, every athlete now have a podcast. Every fucking athlete, my nigga. Like, with all due respect, like, there's niggas who couldn't score 10 points a game. They got a whole podcast these days. Every motherfucking athlete has an opinion. This is why it's so competitive, but it's all good because I love when people are coming into my sphere because I do this every day. I've been doing this for over uh, uh, 13 or 14 years. I like it. But this is why, like, a place like the Breakfast Club doesn't seem as coveted anymore, right? Like, for example, I've seen, um, I seen um, Kevin Gates. He just did a Breakfast Club interview. If he did that same interview with Shannon Sharp, out the, out, out, like, out of here, you know what I mean? Like, right now, Shannon Sharp is, like, the hot place. You know what I mean? And it's not only a hip-hop thing. Everybody's competing. So, like, Shaq just started a podcast. Shaq's podcast is competing with All the Smoke. It's competing with Gillian Wallow. It's competing with Stephen A's podcast. It's competing with Million Dollars Worth of Game. It's competing with Nelk. Um, um, Impulsive. It's, like, everybody competing. So, like, places like The Breakfast Club, this is where we get to realize The Breakfast Club, it was a place that, a lot of the moments was based on a lot of access, right? Like, they were the only people getting these interviews. Nowadays, we're seeing these interviews go to everybody. Like, for example, 21 Savage. Shit, I, I talked to 21 personally. Now, I could have just, like, brown noses and tried to use, oh, you're my friend. She'd be like, yo, you're, you're going to give me an interview because your album's a drop. But not, bro, I understand also his goal. I'm like, bro, he's like, yo, I don't want to do mad interviews. I don't want to do one. He's like, he's like, I was thinking about just only doing Shannon Sharp interview, and I was just like, Nigga, that's you're right. That's the only interview you should do. Like, just do that, and you're good. So again, I just think the the game has broadened a bit. And honestly, uh, I know some of y'all might have just watched me and Flacco like go back and forth. Like when it comes to internet creators and internet podcasts and stuff like that, the Breakfast Club is still a player, but I, I, they used to have like this airtight grip on like everything going on that's not the case anymore and that's a good thing because it gives artists options and it gives viewers options right they're not washed they just have competition you know what i mean like shit it, it, it's like saying let's go to basketball would you call the warriors washed if like they used to go 72 and 10 every year and then now they're going like 60 and 22 or like 57 and 25 or something like that no, they're not washed. It's just more competition. There's probably just better, more better teams. So, uh, or not more better, but just better teams in the league. Anyway, uh, uh, I don't even really want to say congratulations to this little. See, I don't fuck with her. Period. Um, Jess hilarious. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, and and please stop mentioning my name over there. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Oh, somebody said those podcasts, what? <laughs> man, fuck that hoe, man. Man, listen, you know, we, we got to keep smoke for some of these motherfuckers for life, man. They ain't never give me a pass ever, man. Fuck them bitches, man. Okay. All right. Uh, All right, man. We're, we're going to get into the Nikki stuff. So, like, you know, I'm letting some more people get up in this bitch. We're going to get into the Nikki stuff. Just calmly get up in this joint. We're going to get there. Feel me? And by the way, I meant that on GTA, okay, if you don't.
Most of the same niggas smoking out of OZ. Ice cold, ice cold type lit, and I might smoke. Hydro, contemplating what I might do. White shoes, yeah, shorty, I just like you. But you type of, yeah.